I am giving the girls pastel circus and for free. Like, look at me. I look a hot mess, but like a hot mess hi everyone welcome to this video my name is t if you're new here i really do hope everyone's day is going well <gasps> my day is going really really well my day is going fantastic i am still on a high from that grand army video honestly y'all really showed out for me i don't know why but i just had this fear that that video was gonna be like when you invite everyone to a party but only like five people show up because it was so long and it got demonetized because i was cussing and i was like <sighs> The algorithm's probably not going to recommend it and then people aren't gonna click on it, but y'all still showed up. Y'all showed up, y'all showed out. Super interactive comment section and I'm just really thankful. Everyone who watched the video, everyone who communicated with me about the video, I really appreciate it. On to today's video. I thought of this video topic because in retrospect, I spent a few years of my life, not many, but enough, Suppressing my attraction to the same gender. Not because I was afraid that I would be reprimanded by my family or my friends, but because of the representation that I saw of my community in the media, I just could not take myself seriously. My perception of what a WLW dynamic should look like relied heavily on images I was seeing in the media. And because I couldn't see myself in those images, because those images oftentimes gave me a real weird, inexplicable feeling, I developed many subconscious biases. Now that I'm at a place of pride, and I have been for quite a few years now, I have a vendetta. Yes, I am pissed with a capital P. Very much would like to remove earrings, very much would like to throw hands, absolutely. So I decided to look it up. What is it about bi, pan, WLW representation in TV and film and music that is so harmful and causes so much erasure? Why does this representation exist in the first place and why is it only in this specific way? In the Journal of Bisexuality, Brianna Foss writes, Performative bisexuality is defined primarily as engaging in homoerotic acts with other women, usually in front of men and most often in the context of social settings. That essay will be referenced a lot throughout this video so I'm just gonna go ahead and link it in the description in case you want to pause and check it out for yourself. Obviously women are not the only ones who can be attracted to the same gender but performative bisexuality is most common amongst women because generally women are allowed more freedom to explore sexual identity. For once we have the privilege because society does not view sexual fluidity or exploration in women as a detriment to our womanhood. Women can try it and decide if it is or isn't for them, and if they decide it isn't for them, they can easily revert back to heteronormativity without any pushback. Whereas men, they don't get that freedom. Take for example on the show Insecure, which y'all know I love. There was that one episode where Molly- Also in college, I made out with a girl at a frat party. Mm. See, I'm not mad at that. Of course you're not. Okay, what else you got? Well, I was 20. Kind of had a sexual experience like yours. What'd you mean? I messed around with a guy before. Well, you do what? I'd never done anything like this before, and I knew afterwards it wasn't for me. Uh, like, like, like how long after? Uh... Like, immediately. Okay, like, like immediately when? And, and like, was this like a, like a one-time thing? Was this like this one guy? And Molly drove him away for that because in her head, he was gay and he was gay forever. And just the thought of him being with another man made him seem like less of a man to her. But yes, that is one of the many reasons why women are allowed more freedom to explore same gender relations. But when we dive into the performative aspect of it, the, the pretending aspect of it, it's not as freeing as it seems. Though these acts may be consensual and they may seem wild and fun, they are not done with authentic desire. They are done in response to a cultural demand which, if performed correctly, will reward them with male validation and attention. This cultural demand is dominated by the male gay. The male gaze is a term that was coined in 1975 by feminist film theorist Laura Mulvey. It basically states that a woman's placement in film is from the perspective of or for the appeasement of the heterosexual male viewer. This can be as obvious as scenes of women engaging in normal everyday activities, but coincidentally doing so in revealing clothing that can coincidentally be seen from revealing angles. 
or as simple as camera placement that captures women from an overlooking angle, which is the heteronormative ideal. Big man looks down on puny woman. Because women have also had to view themselves in TV and film through the male gaze, it's not uncommon to see works in the media, especially in music, even if completely spearheaded and performed solely by women, to include some compulsory element of eroticism. Not to say that women are always and only expressing their sexuality for the appeasement of men, but we would be remiss not to notice that what we view as most desirable in women's media closely aligns with what men view as most ideal, even if that ideal is completely unrealistic. We've heard the age-old phrase, sex sells, and the male gaze is its buyer. Thus, the objective of sensual encounters between women is less to depict a realistic encounter or even a fantastical encounter that can be imagined by women who actually like women, but to replicate how the male gaze imagines it, how it imagines them to look, act, sound. And before you know it, the most common image of a two-woman relationship is solidified as two feminine presenting women engaging not for the pleasure of each other, but for the pleasure of an audience. A male audience. The essay reads, Many women report that these performances feel compulsory or required to garner validation within their heterosexual relationships or the heteronormative culture at large. Basically, the women who are doing this are saying that they're not doing it because they necessarily want to, but because the men in their lives want them to or the men in society want them to. Let's go over some examples. I have quite a few. The Madonna, Britney, Christina performance at the VMAs in 2003. Britney singing her verse, Christina singing hers. They're both in these pop rock wedding dresses. Then Madonna comes out in a tux and she serves as the overseer who will bond the tension of these two quarreling damsels. And for the sweet release of it all, she plants a tongue kiss on both of them. And that was talked about for months, probably years. Now, where do we begin? with this one. Well, even though they are all women, this performance still intentionally followed the heteronormative BS power imbalance of here are two feminine women, perfect, precious, and pure, bonded only by their desire for me, the groom. Next example. Do y'all remember, oh my gosh, I'm about to wake up a suppressed memory for you. Do y'all remember that reality show on BH1 called A Shot of Love with Tila Tequila? Tila Tequila, who is, or at the time, claimed to be bisexual, had a dating show on VH1 where she had both men and women competing for her love. This show was such a great opportunity to just show a bi person having genuine feelings for both women and men. I'm not saying change the world with it, but at least be normal. But instead, she made all the contestants sleep in one big ass bed. There had to be like 20, maybe 40 contestants, and she just made them all sleep in one bed. And everything about the show was so kinkified and fetishized, and that was just the whole vibe of the show, just licking and touching and kissing and rubbing it. Just for her to come out a couple years later and say, nah, I was just playing. Um, I don't know if y'all remember, in 2018, there was some controversy over Rita Ora's song, Girls. That song is a bop though, I'm not even about to lie which was basically about, yeah, you know, sometimes I like to get drunk and just kiss girl on mouth because like, quirky, right? She did catch some heat for that, but I remember when loud and proud WLWs in the industry like Hailey Kiyoko and Kehlani called her out for it, they were getting hate too. People were like, nah, you're just hating. This is not harmful representation. This is good. This is what the people want. But when Kehlani announced her pregnancy, with a man, y'all just couldn't seem to understand it because the last relationship we saw her in was with a woman. Y'all saw real bisexuality in action and said, huh? Y'all said, this just doesn't make sense, so let's just bully her until we figure it out. But these images aren't harmful, right? They're not a form of erasure, right? They're not misrepresenting the community, right? What else we got on this list? Uh, Nicki Minaj having queer suggestive lyrics early on in her career. Tap dancing around interviewers who would ask her straight up, hey, do you like all genders? Just for her to come out a couple years later and say she did it all for attention. Jesse J saying when she came out as bi, it was just a phase. Like, <laughs> y'all gotta know that the eroticism behind this is not my problem. 
The fact that they're showing skin and being risque and touching up on each other is not my issue. It never will be. My problem is with the objective. It's with the end game. It's with the integrity of it. That is rarely ever coming from an authentic place. These performances reinforce the idea that bisexuality is not real. It's just some ornament to adorn the male ego. It also aids the thought that anything involving women loving women cannot exist without straight men. And that makes no sense. <laughs> no other dynamic needs an outsider's validation. We don't rely on straight women to validate gay men's relationships. We don't rely on gay men to validate straight people's relationships, so... The second a bi woman makes her orientation known, it's like she's immediately erased as a person and she's instead viewed as a puppet who is expected to, on command, prove herself by adhering to this salacious and over-sexualized standard. How the fuck you think that makes us feel? When we're just out here casually existing, just vibing, at like a party for example, and we're just having normal conversation we're like, yeah, you know, I like women too. And people say, oh word, go make out with that girl across the room. Like, bro, I don't even know her. I'm not negating the experiences of these women. It's very possible that they have slash do have attraction towards women. And in the case of Nicki Minaj and Jessie J, there is absolutely nothing wrong with experimenting until you figure it out. I'm all for that. But the problem is they will put these feelings and curiosities on full display and then it stops right there at the aesthetic and the arousal of it all. Without hesitation, they will make a spectacle about their maybe-ish attraction towards women. They'll make a whole reality show about it. They'll paint the picture for us in the lyrics. They'll show us the picture literally in the videos. But when it really comes down to it, they don't have any emotional depth about it. They have little to no experience with it. They have no words for the bi community. No thoughts except for horniness. And you're just playing. You're playing. You're taking real people's existence and reproducing it through the lens of some 40 year old incel. And you're helping this already biased world to erase the truth of an entire community's existence. All for popularity and a check. And for the straight women who are influenced by these performances and they try to replicate it in their real lives, there is a clear disconnect between their behavior and their attitude. In the essay, Foz did an experiment with a group of women. They were from different ages, races, orientations. Some women in the experiment who had experienced attraction to the same gender and had even gone as far as performing bisexuality to arouse their male partners, they were bigots. They were phobes. Foz writes, the central problem becomes whether performative versions of same-sex eroticism signify a shift in consciousness or not. If men's patriarchal fantasies dominate the landscape of sexuality and men's fantasies become normative and widespread, this results in women internalizing men's fantasies to feel accepted, loved, and perhaps objectified and sexualized. I'm not excusing their bigotry, but that's another conversation, one of which we've already had several times on this channel. So instead, I'll just say, male fantasy cannot be the only dominating force in female sexuality. Even if you're a straight woman, you gotta find a way to live for more than that. And people love to say that representational media is not as important as we make it out to be, but honestly, stop lying. I've talked about the Netflix documentary Disclosure, and that documentary showed us firsthand how the media's misrepresentation and constant erasure of trans existence directly correlates with the world's horrific treatment and ignorance towards the trans community. And even though I considered myself an ally of the community years before I ever even saw Disclosure, Watching that documentary gave me my first aha moment. It was the first time I had to sit there and confront my own ignorance face to face. And when it comes to what I'm talking about in this video, I need more aha moments for bi people. The media has never been more significant than it is right now. And we have so many hands on deck in Hollywood and beyond. Everyone should be able to see themselves positively and realistically represented in the media. Everyone. Thank you all so much for watching this video, especially if you made it all the way to the end. Be sure to leave your thoughts and your comments down below. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, however you're feeling today, and subscribe for more content. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.